What's up YouTube, this is Moan Tech with you again. Today we're going to talk about the MacBook Air M2 which was released just now. And we're going to talk about specifically about music production. Is this PC good for the music production? Or is it just for Word documents? So let's get started before you jump to the video make sure you check out the description below all the great links are going to be out there and as well make sure you subscribe to the mailboxing to receive great tech stuff just a minor comment today i'm using webcam so don't expect great quality out of video thank you make sure you stick till the end because there are some important things to note all right, so we've opened the Apple page and we can see that we've got a beautiful, I don't know, are those children or what? I mean, MacBook Air should be for the grown-ups as well, isn't it? So anyway, um, if we jump to the MacBook Air, uh, we can see that we've got we can learn more about it. So we've got the M2 chip model coming into four colors, as I can see. Um, and let's check out those colors. Okay, so let's talk about the colors at first. As it turns out, we've got probably the silver, the goldish thing. Is that a bit dark silver? And we've got... Um, is it midnight? I suppose. I really dig the midnight's color, and obviously the usual thing. I'd probably pick midnight. I think, at least in this picture, it's like very, very beautiful, isn't it? Anyway, so obviously we've got the M2 chip, um, and um, it's powerful. It's more powerful than the M1 chip, so that should be fine. I mean, usually people talk about like big specs out there but we know that M1 already had a great impact for the music industry and it worked out really well. Um, then let's see the screen and the overall um, design. Well we've got the bezel. Um, this is something that Apple do. I'm not really concerned about it. Um, I'm totally fine with it. Um, but what about the battery? So we've got a whopping 18 hours of battery life which is super nice I mean not that in the music production probably if you're gonna spend a lot of hours you're gonna plug it in but do you know what like in a plane in a hotel whatever in the beach 18 hours of battery life for creating music it's insanely good so let's go further and they say they've got advanced camera and audio um, probably we wouldn't, musicians would not care about it really much, as long as you can be singing that's fine. Um, the audio, you know we're not going to use the MacBook's audio um, speakers for music production, but I suppose um, we, we know that MacBook Air has great um, audio capabilities, MacBooks in general, they're quite good for listening to radio but for other music production we would just get external speakers obviously so no much comment on that so talking about lightly um, I thought they were talking about the weight but they just were talking about the processor um, so less carry less to carry more to love well, that's a beautiful saying, and that probably is that it's only two comma seven pounds and zero point forty four inches thin, which is crazy. I mean, it's going to fit in your bag. It's not going to be heavy. It's going to be stylish and everything. And you know, if you show up to I don't know songwriting session or anything, uh, you'd probably. Um, gonna fit in with this MacBook, right? And it's and as all MacBooks, I think they usually have great finish for the body. 
All right. As I said, the midnight just looked so great. Um, oh, and the mag safe. So now we get a mag safe, which is so good. I mean, I would prefer maybe USB C, but um, in the given time, I've been thinking about this and actually the mag safe thing with the magnets and everything. It's even more cooler solution than USB-C. Now USB-C you could have laying around the table or studio, but I think MagSafe is a great option um, not to destroy your computer and actually just to get started in a way faster thing. So we've got Space Gray, which is fine, Silver, and Starlight. I do like Starlight. Um, less out of all the other colors probably it feels like a bit dull anyway so let's go um to check out obviously we've got um two thunder ports um thunderbolt ports on the left side we've got the magsafe thing and that's pretty much it I don't see the other side. Um, right. Okay. They're claiming it to be 1.4 times faster than M1. Totally fine. M1 was already a powerful laptop for music production. So that would be super good for making music. Now let's see what they say about progress. It's all about video editing here. Not really that much about music production, but as we as we know, video editing is a very powerful thing as well, so if it gets supported, and there's a 1.4 difference between the M1, so music bit should be plenty enough in, in that scope of the thing. Now, what we could talk about is, um, let me think about, so we've got 500 nits of brightness. I think, if I'm not wrong, that was 100 nits more than the previous version. So, no problem there, right? MacBook Air, first MacBook Air was bright enough for me, at least, and I don't, I think it's a great color um, thing. And for music production, it's gonna be fine. I'd, in most of the cases, um, most likely we're gonna use the um, separate monitors for, you know, higher viewability. So we've got three mic array, we don't care really about that, the spatial audio, we don't really care about that. Um, touch ID, that's a beautiful thing, I suppose that would be easy to use. Um, and the head headphone jack, which is a super nice thing, because you can pop your headphones when you need them the most. Um, maybe, you know, with some kind of Sona works. Um, mixing headphones and software might work very good. Um, then, what do we see here? So, I would not go for this, but I would say learn more. And what if we buy what kind of choices do we have? So, if we would buy M2 laptop, we've got the choice between two laptops, one featuring 8-core GPU and the second featuring 10-core GPU. For music production, I would say that we don't care about this increase. Even without music production, that would be a very, very unnoticeable difference for average user. Um, and then, you know, the SSD storage is something that you can customize for the first version as well. So my recommendation would be if you want to get the most for your budget, I would just take the first version because I don't feel that the increments in functionality and the processing power is, is worth the $300 out there, right? So I don't really... So if we go for the first one, if we check out the configuration here for music production specifically, 
Uh, we've got the Apple M2 chip with 8 core CPU and 8 core GPU. And then we've got with 10 core GPU. So my recommendation is to stay at 8 core. It's going to be fine. Uh, the memory, as we all know, music is very, very intensive, memory intensive. So I would go for 16 gigabytes of memory. Um, it's really worth the $200, I think, because 8 gigabytes might be a bottleneck if you do a bit more, a bit more um, tracks in your project. Now there is a 24 version for this as well. It's a very odd number because usually you go, you know, 8, 16, 32 gigabytes. So I'm not sure about the architecture for this one, but. Um, I would say you don't have to take it unless you're making big, big orchestral music with a lot of VSTs and super much, I don't know, 50 tracks or whatever in, inside of your project, then you would go for 24 gigabytes. But now 16 gigabytes is going to do your job. Um, storage. Myself, I probably even would stay between either to, uh, 256 or 512. I'm not a fan of keeping all the libraries and projects on the main device, so I try to use the main device just as a processing, you know, DAW thing and, and stuff. But to to store the project and to store, just have a external drive for for all the libraries um, and the projects you know, for usability purposes, probably in a separate um, hard drives, if that's possible, and then to back it off even to the more hard drives. Um, that is a bit off topic here, but backup always saves your day. Um, so I know that I've got tendency on saving everything on desktop. So then I would go for 500, but then it makes the computer Budget computer very expensive, so let me keep it at 256. They've got the choice for the power adapter. Um, the second power adapter is something new from Apple, so it features additional USB C port. I would go for that. I uh, would not go for 67 watts of adapter because you've got 18 hours of battery life, so you don't really need it. You know, like where. You don't really need fast charging for that. So I would go for 35, which gives you the flexibility if you decide to use it. And then obviously you could add Logic Pro if that's what you wish, but we've all have our DAWs and we could possibly do something different. So the delivery is currently unavailable for the computer. Um, it's gonna be available later, but so to summarize it, I think it's a beautiful laptop to have. Um, is it worth? Is it worth taking over the M1 laptop? Performance-wise, it always will be. Well, I'd say the first laptop already was good. So, if you get a good deal on M1, you can take M1. It should be no problem at all. Um, but if you buy a new laptop, well, the recommendation would always be grab the new version of the laptop. Um, if you want to have it cheaper, maybe you know don't don't take 500 gigabytes storage, take 256, and just buy great um, external storage for your project. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, I would highly recommend 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, you could probably do basic projects with 8 gigabytes of memory, um, but it would be very hard. So if you would hit the bottleneck out there, that would be pity, right? So take the 16 gigabytes and, and really the rest you can decide um, whether you want to have something more or just stay at the base settings. The wrap up for this computer would be that it is highly recommended for music production from my side. 
I forgot to mention that you don't have fans inside of this computer, the same as you had in M1, and for me that's one of the highest um, purchase reasons I would get this laptop, because I don't like sound, and if you make music, any little fan sound could get in your microphone or get in your whatever you know sound design you have at your home so having no fan is a great thing to have um and and that's about it yeah so you could get windows laptop for this price money probably almost outspecced um you know with with crazy rams and everything but i would say the m laptop MacBook Air is, is a very very cool niche to have because you, you, you the price is very low like comparing it to MacBook Pros and everything and the usability is so great right if you would have if you would like to have two monitors you could extend it with adapter whatever you've got dock maybe doesn't matter we'll just buy super wide screen but for music production macbook hair i think is one of the most um greatest for budget for style and for overall pluses and minuses in terms of performance and you know the money and the price you pay for it in in the music industry thank you and see you next time